Chapter 20. Three heads are better than one. With a fierce snarl, Cerberus lunged at Hector again. Hector dodged the three heads and scrambled up the stairs, using all his super strength and speed to evade the ferocious rabid beast. Hector banged on the door, trying to get it to open back up, but it wouldn't budge. It was locked and stayed shut tight. He really was trapped down here. The acrid, sulfurous air choked his lungs. Smoke wafted up the stairs, obscuring the bluish light and making it hard to see anything. He glanced back into the smoke, struggling to see whether the dog was rearing back to make another strike. The smoke cleared slightly and Hector saw that. Sure enough, Cerberus had retracted its heads, preparing to lunge again. Six yellow eyes caught the bluish light while three sets of needle-sharp teeth glinted, ready to devour Hector alive. He wasn't going to get away, but luckily he'd come prepared. Hector reached into his camera bag and pulled out a hunk of raw steak. He tossed it at the dog, and the bloody cut of meat hit the stairs, sliding down toward the monster's feet. Good boy, Hector urged the three-headed dog. Dinner served. Go get it. With a surprise yelp, Cerberus pivoted and chased after the stake. The three heads started fighting over it, allowing Hector to slip down the stairs and pass the beast into the underworld, a sprawling underground cavern. Hector took in his surroundings. Warm air wafted up from the cracks in the ground, making him sweat. It smelled like burning sulfur and burning and sulfur too. The light was eerie, otherworldly, and blue-tinged, much like Hades' flaming hair. Rock formations jutted down from the top of the cavern like spikes waiting to impale him. Hector glanced back at Cerberus, whose heads continued to snap at each other, brawling over the stake. Just like me and my brothers, Hector thought, suppressing a grin despite his nerves. He'd stolen the stake from the fridge at home. He just hoped his mother wouldn't be too angry when she discovered that tomorrow's dinner was gone. Hades was, Hades was scary, but his mother could be scary too. Hector carefully tucked the Zeus cup into his camera bag, making sure that it was secure. Then he crossed an arched stone bridge over a fire pit, leading him deeper into the underworld. It smelled like brimstone, sulfur, and smoke. He cringled his nose in disgust. Everything here felt like it was either on fire or could burst into flames at any moment, just like Hades himself. Ahead of him flowed the river Styx, winding, winding through the underworld. He recognized it from the books, too. Once again, feeling a surge of gratitude for May and her idea to research Hades in the library. Books really were like magic. They gave you the power of knowledge, which was the best kind. Across the river, a giant castle shaped like a skull towered overhead. That must be where Hades lives, Hector thought. The castle gave him the creeps. It was lit by blue torches, making the skull look alive with flaming eyes. It was almost as if it was watching him, waiting for him. Hector shuddered feeling a fresh rush of fear, but he tried to shake it off. He had to save May, and he didn't have much time left. The alignment was coming soon. As he scanned the area for a way across the river, he made the mistake of glancing down into the watery depths and frozen fear. Ghoulish creatures swirled in the waters, thrashing at him. Their eyes were mournful, and their wailing mouths made them look like they were in a permanent state of torture. They lunged up at him, but the water's surface kept them trapped. They couldn't get to him. What are they? Hector wondered, trembling. This place was full of creepy monsters. He needed to hurry. There had to be a way to get to the castle. Then, in the corner of his vision, something appeared as if from nowhere. A boat. It was docked at the edge of the river, piloted by a skeleton waiting to... F Fairy passengers across. Yeah, that's not creepy, Hector whispered to himself. He started toward the boat, when suddenly something exploded out of the river and towered over him. It was Hydra. 
Hector had half a second to think before the river serpent lunged. He tucked and rolled away, just missing, getting snatched up by the f fearsome jaws. If Cerberus was freaky, this monster was e way freakier and had even more heads. What's with all the heads? H Hector hissed, recovering quickly. One isn't enough? As if the creature understood his insult, its many heads roared. The creature's breath smelled horrid. Hector grinned back in fear and disgust. Sorry, your heads are great, but clearly the river serpent couldn't take a joke. It lunged at him again. Hey, we can work this out, Hector tried, some somersaulting out of the way just in time. The creature's jaws tore into the ground next to his head, ripping into the rock and cutting into it. One inch over, and Hector could, would have been a goner. He raised his hands. Look, I just want to get across the river and talk to your boss, man. Hector tried, pleading with the creature. We don't have to fight about it. You can just chill out in your super nice haunted river and let me go Hydra roared again. Cracking open its ferocious jaws, the creature prepared to lunge at him again. Hector didn't have a plan this time, but he fell back on a proven strategy, one that kind of summed up his life. When in doubt, Run for it. Hector sprinted for the boat, using his super speed. Hydra, Hydra gave chase, but Hector reached the boat first. The skeleton tilted its head, regarding him with empty eyes. Mr. Skeleton, hurry, Hector said. Please, take me to Hades. What makes you worthy of passage through the underworld? The skeleton said in a deep, musty voice. Clearly, he wasn't in any rush either. He sounded bored. Uh, worthy? Hector stammered. He glanced back over his shoulder. The hydra reared up behind him, ready to pounce again. The many heads ring wriggled around. The skeleton leaned on his oar, staring at him impassively through empty eye sockets. If you can't prove you're worthy, you must pay the toll, the skeleton continued unperturbed. A toll? What do you mean? Hector guessed he'd seen a fair number of guests snatched up by the Hydra. It didn't bother him. The Hydra was coming, and it was coming fast. He had to hurry. Uh, I'm the champion, the true hero, Hector said, fumbling for his camera bag, trying to get it open and reach the trophy, and I'm the protector of the Zeus Cup. Then prove it, the skeleton said blandly. Hector struggled to get the bag open then reached inside and gripped the golden handle. His fingers wrapped around it just in time. Just around it just in time. He held up the trophy. The luminous surface caught the light, throwing off blinding flashes of gold that lit up the cavern. The hydra was about to lunge, but instead it reeled back, screeching in pain at the sight of the Zeus cup. It quickly dove back into the river sticks swimming deep through the ghoulish souls until it was gone. The water sloshed back into place, rocking the boat. The skeleton cracked its jaws open and let out a dusty cackle. Or at least Hector thought it was a cackle. He couldn't be sure. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? The skeleton rasped, using his paddle to turn the boat around. Hop in, kid. The skeleton skillfully put pil piloted them down the river toward the stone skeleton castle. Hector couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. It gave him the shakes. He peered anxiously into the water. Eerie eyes stared back at him from the depths. What are those? He asked, pointing at the creatures. Mortal souls, the skeleton rasped, whose thread of life has been cut by the fates. They're imprisoned down here forever. Hector swallowed hard. This was May's fate if he didn't save her. Maybe both their fates. Hector dragged his eyes off the souls. He tried to focus on the castle and what awaited him there. A few minutes later, they turned up in front of the castle. End of the road, or rather the river, the skeleton chuckled. Sense of humor isn't something I expected. To find in the underworld, Hector said, 
glancing back at the skeleton in appreciation. Well, I wasn't always like this, the skeleton said. I used to be mortal too. If you're lucky, maybe Hades will let you serve him. Beats being trapped river soul. He let out another raspy chuckle, then started back across the river, paddling slowly as the souls drifted around his oar, reaching their ghostly hands out, pleading for help. But their hands passed through the oar like smoke. Hector couldn't let that happen to May. He turned away from the river and started up the stairs that m snaked into the skull castle. They were smooth, worn down by eons of foot traffic. Blue torches lit the way. The stench of sulfur and smoke grew stronger. The closer he got to the skull's mouth, the hotter it became. Hector started to, per to perspire. The sweat dripped down his face and stung his eyes. Haven't they heard of AC in the underworld? He muttered to himself. That was it. He'd officially inherited his dad's corny sense of humor. He knew he should be horrified, but he felt a strange sense of comfort, almost like his family was with him. He burst into the castle and found Hades sitting in all his godlike glory, on his throne hewn out of solid stone. Blue torches glowed on either side of him, ma matching the blue flames flickering on the top of his head, his yellow eyes fixed on Hector. Wonder Boy, you made it! Hades sneered from his perch. And just in time to save your little friend here. He gestured to the side of the throne, waving his long fingers. May lay there, her hands bound behind her. She struggled against her restraints, trying to get free. Hector, you came for me, she cried. How did you find the door to the underworld? H Hades said, frowning in displeasure. Orange flames licked his forehead as he grew angry. Uh, your little minions let a clue slip, Hector said. Pain and panic, get down here, Hades yelled. There was a lot loud commotion. Then pain and panic tumbled down the stairs and popped back up on their feet. Come in, your most galubrugriousness, Pain yelped. Pain and panic reporting for duty, Pain panic added with a salute. Hades snarled at them, flaming even redder. How'd Wonder Boy get in here? He demanded. Uh, I don't know, Pain said, glancing at panic. Yeah, no idea how that happened, Z Panic added. Z zero clue. It's a total mystery, you morons! He said, flaming brighter and hotter. Pain and panic morphed into worms. We are worms! They groveled, writhing around on the ground. Worthless worms! Memo to me, Hades said with a demissive wave of his hand. Maim, maim them after I deal with Wonder Boy and his little friend here. May shrieked, squirming on the ground and trying to get free. Fear glistened in her wide eyes. She tried to get away from Hades and his flaming head of hair. No, don't hurt her, H Hector said, gripping his camera bag. Hades stood up, his long black robes blocking Hector's view of May. Hector wrapped his hand around his bit, his camera bag tighter. No matter, give me the Zeus cup, Hades leered down at him, and I'll let your little friend go. How does that sound? Plus, I'll forgive you, I'll forgive you for trying to back out of our deal. Hector hesitated. He knew that he couldn't trust Hades. He manipulated mortals and was a liar. He'd already proven that. Hector gripped his camera bag tighter, meeting H Hades' gaze. You want the Zeus cup? Hector yelled. Then catch it! With that, he tossed the camera bag at Hades. The bag sailed through the air in a perfect arc. While Hades lunged for the camera bag, Hector ran, ran to May and quickly untied her hands. Hurry, we have to run, he said, dragging her to her feet. They were both fast as the wind as they sprinted away from the throne room toward the stairs. They flew down the steps, taking them to a, taking them two at a time and bolted toward the river sticks. But then May skidded to a halt. She shot Hector a worried look. But the Zeus cup, she said, turning back. 
We can't leave it behind. You gave it to Hades. Now he'll unleash the Titans and destroy the world if we don't stop him. Oh, is that so? Hector said, giving her a sly wink. What do you mean? She said, glancing back. We have to go back. We can't let him have it. Hector smirked. Then he showed her the Zeus cup, tucked under his shirt. It's just a little trick I learned from my best friend, he said. He'd hidden it under his shirt during the boat ride, planning to trick Hades and play dirty to defeat him. Wow, you're a true hero, May said in amazement. She reached out to touch the outline of the cup, when suddenly pain and panic pounced on Hector, pinning him down. Where you going, Wonder Boy? Payne said. Yeah, don't leave the party yet, Panic added with a cackle. It's just getting started. They dragged him toward the river Styx, where the ghoulish souls swirled in the dark waters. Give us the Zeus cup, Panic said, pushing Hector's head toward the murky water, where the souls congregated in anticipation of a new member joining them in eternal purgatory. Or take a swim in the river. Payne reached for the cup. But Hector struggled, fighting them all. He got free from the demons for a moment and reached for May's hand. She grabbed his hand, holding it tight. Hurry, let's get out of here, Hector said, yanking her away. Just like it's a race, right? May added with a wink. They turned to run toward the ferry, when suddenly a dark shadow stretched over them. Blue flames erupted into orange, then burned red hot, fiery and angry. Hades was furious, beyond furious, livid, flaming hot livid. Hades leered over Hector with a creepy, sleazy grin. His distinctive voice echoed out. Looks like Wonder Boy is not so wondrous now, is he? Seizing on the distraction, pain and panic pounced on Hector again, pinning him down helplessly. He struggled against them but couldn't get free. The demons were stronger than they looked and they had sharp claws. May tried to knock them off, but Payne pushed her back. She fell, hitting her head with a thud, and went lifeless. May, no! Hector screamed in a panic. No, let me go! He tried to break away to get to May, but he was trapped in the demon's iron grip. While Payne and Panic held Hector down, Hades towered over him, stretching out his long, thin fingers and reaching for the Zeus cup to claim it once and for all.